She had a meteoric rise to fame on Italian TV thanks to peddling quote-unquote miracle slimming creams, but her fall from grace was just as swift. How did this screaming, insulting brute become a cultural icon? This is the true crime story of Vanna Marchi, the scamming TV saleswoman who landed herself in jail thanks to some lotto numbers. Hi friends, I'm Katie, and this is Katie Does Crime. You'll have to excuse me today for not being on camera. I'm on a family vacation and don't have my equipment with me, so I'm just recording this audio on my laptop. Now, this may come as a shock to you, but there was a time before endless social media scrolling, always on streaming services, and even 24-hour cable TV. People used to just watch whatever was on their television because there was nothing else to do. And that was the golden age of Vanna Marchi. I got interested in this so-called queen of teleshopping when I heard about Netflix's new documentary about her, Fortune Seller, a TV scam. She was a cultural icon in Italy in the 80s and 90s, but there's really not a lot of English language information about Vanna Marchi out there. So today's case will be short and sweet, and mostly translated from Italian, a language which I know about five words of, thanks to having read a lot of Olive Garden menus in my time. So you've been warned. Born Vanna with a V, Marchi, in a tiny town outside of Bologna in northern Italy on September 2nd, 1942, Vanna was the oldest of her siblings. I'm imagining that she later changed her name to Vanna with a W, either because W isn't an official letter of the Italian alphabet and she wanted to be special, or she liked the play on words with want and her being a saleswoman. But that's just my guess. When her father died on Christmas Day when she was only 15 years old, Vanna helped the family by becoming a beautician. A few years later, she would marry the man she had two children with, a wealthy older guy who helped her open her own salon. Vanna said it was his violence that led to their marriage ending before the decade was even over, but the salon lasted longer than he did and brought Vanna success through the 60s and 70s. She began creating her own beauty products in the late 70s and got in with the creator of the first Italian home shopping network, who gave her a spot on his program. Thanks to her outlandish personality, by the early 1980s, she had her own show on the private Reta A channel alongside telenovelas and other telemarketers. But she separated herself with her delivery, which was loud, obnoxious, and shrill, her gestures, which were flashy and sharp, and her hair, which was bright red, or orange if we're being honest. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, Vanna assaulted her viewers at 11 p.m. with screams and catchphrases. Apparently the one she was known for was asking, agreed? In that way where you totally don't agree but feel like you have no choice. The Italian media said she was no telemarketer, she was a telebarker. Volete togliere la pancia? E beh, cosa aspettate? It kind of reminds me of those scary televangelists you see on American TV. Those guys yelling at their loyal viewers that they're all going to hell. Vanna would actually insult her viewers, telling them they were physically lacking and lazy if they didn't buy the goods she produced and distributed. Her most famous was the melting belly cream, said to be made of dandelion and algae extracts. She declared a war on lard, and even though three jars cost 100,000 Italian lira, or about $200 in USD today, people couldn't resist the dream she was selling. They were buying 300 million lira of products every day. If you don't call, you're idiots, she told them. There were also hair regrowth lotions, anti-wrinkle serums, and herbs to help you sleep. Her son and daughter were often on the show to help, and despite the yelling and the mocking, the Italian public was sold on Vanna. Her flashy style, lighting, and theatricality drew people in at a time when private television stations were just becoming a thing. Vanna started showing up in TV miniseries and movies with small comedy parts, like one where she was an ancient saleswoman hawking snake oil cures for the plague. Her big movie debut earned the very impressive score of 3.8 out of 10 on the Internet Movie Database. She was invited on legitimate financial programs and even released a pop song based on her catchphrase. It's mostly just Vanna talking and cackling, but I have to play you a few seconds so you can see this amazing embodiment of the culture at the time. (laughs) 
But the golden days of telemarketing ended in the early 90s when regulators caught up and introduced rules about how things could be sold during TV broadcasts. Vana was taken off the air, but she didn't disappear from public life. She had declared bankruptcy, but the Italian authorities called it a fraudulent one. After saying she was bankrupt, Vana was right back on television, working under a new company, a company owned by Vana's daughter, Stefania, and a friend who sold himself as a holy man and a fortune teller. So basically, the family was still in business, and business was just fine. She was given one year and 11 months in prison. But from the grave, Vana rose again, this time pushing her luck even further by not even bothering to sell a real product. This time, she and her daughter were selling magic. Her show would usually start with a story about a friend, relative, or person in the news who had fallen upon some sort of hard time. They weren't just unlucky, she said, but also stupid for not calling Vana. Cut to the fortune teller business partner who would offer personalized lottery numbers to callers so that they would never befall the same misfortune. And it only cost the low, low price of whatever they could afford. The story they told is that this fortune teller was a man Vana's daughter had met during a business trip to Brazil. That night, he slipped a note under her door that predicted the next two years of her life. You won't be surprised to learn that this so-called holy man was actually just the cook for a family friend. But fake callers would phone in thanking the magician, saying their lives had changed because of him, that they were now lotto winners and happy relationship havers. Sometimes he would say that he just wanted to do good and needed no money in return, and the planted viewers would act appalled that he would even consider giving away his gift for free. It's reported that Vana earned 32 million euros between 1996 and 2001 from this little charade. Vana continued to scam unwitting viewers until 2001 when she messed with the wrong woman. This particular pensioner had been a customer of Vana's back in her melting belly cream days, so an associate of Vana's called her up and said that Vana had had a dream about her. In this dream, the woman played lottery numbers that Vana gave to her and became an instant millionaire. And for a mere 150 euros, Vana would mail those numbers to her. The woman, who probably was none the slimmer from Vana's slimming lotion, had the good sense to call a local news program that exposes fraudsters. The program had her go ahead and play along with the scam, paying her 150 euros to Vana and receiving those winning lottery numbers along with a packet of magical salt. She did as instructed and added the salt to a glass of water and left it in the dark for a week. Then she played the supernatural numbers from Vana's mystical dream two times, and shocker, she lost both times. When she called to complain while the news program recorded her conversation, Vana's quote-unquote expert told her that if the salt hadn't dissolved, there was some major black magic working against her. I mean, not their fault when you really think about it. But for another 2,000 euros, Vana's wizard would concoct a potion to ward off the evil eye. When the woman refused to pay anything more, Vana's daughter came onto the line and said the woman would never sleep another wink as long as she lived. That's when the police came calling. They found records of over 300,000 clients, some of them who bankrupted their families with payments to Vana of 400 or 500,000 euros. Vana and her associates mostly went after older, poorer, less educated women and intimidated and manipulated them into handing over everything they had. The magic salt sent to customers was just table salt, and they always sent so much that it would never fully dissolve in a glass of water. The magic sprig sent to customers was just a clipping from an ivy plant outside their office. Vana, her daughter, and five others from their company were arrested in June 2002, just as Vana was trying to flee the country with a shipping container full of her personal effects and 200 kilos of toilet paper. I guess she was full of crap in more than one sense of the word. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison for aggravated fraud and had to compensate 60 people who filed complaints against her. While awaiting appeal, Vana opened another beauty salon near Bologna. In March 2008, her sentence was reduced just slightly to nine years, six months, while her daughter received two months fewer. The holy man, magician, wizard got three years for his part, but escaped to Brazil and has never returned to Italy. Vana made news for being out and about as part of a work release program in 2011 and having an early release in 2012 to help care for her daughter after a hip surgery. Vana and her daughter were released from prison soon after and have since resumed their status as cultural icons, although maybe now in that way that you can't look away from a car wreck. 
In 2017, they were invited on The Island of the Famous, Italy's celebrity version of Survivor, but they were asked to leave even before production began due to the backlash. Vanna says they were basically paid to stay home. That same year, they were supposed to present a course to aspiring salespeople at Italy's Volta Institute, but the offer was later rescinded due to controversy. In 2021, they attempted a 100-hour marathon of live television, but due to low ratings, the network canceled the show mid-airing. They started a cooking Instagram during COVID to share the recipes Vanna made for her 92 fellow inmates while in prison, but it's since been deleted. It appears that they're currently living in Albania and trying to peddle catchphrase t-shirts and their 499 euro sales course through the daughter's website. Vana is 80 years old today and will be back in the limelight on September 21st in a multi-part Netflix documentary. Now, supporters of Vana say she was a genius, that she offended her viewers as a way to get them to be their best. Others say she was selling an illusion and preying on people's hidden desires to be slim and rich at any cost. One article I read said that Vanna was the embodiment of the worst flaws in Italian culture, vanity, gullibility, television's pervasive power, and an attraction to overblown and excessive figures. We're drawn to stories of these scammers in a sickly fascinated way. We wonder how our lives would be different if we didn't feel guilt and didn't mind taking advantage of others for our own benefit like they do. But I also think we like hearing stories about these kind of people in the same way we like hearing about serial killers and kidnappers. To learn how they operate so we can avoid and outsmart them. To learn from the mistakes of others. So what do you think? Was Vanna Markey an anti-heroine who just took advantage of people who were too superstitious for their own good? Or should the Italian people cancel her for good? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube video. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking a chance on me. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you liked spending this time together. I'd be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime.